welcome to Game Changers, everyone. I'm so super excited about this because they are what they say they are. They are game changers. And um, just to start with a bit of housekeeping. So this session is being recorded. Um, if you can put your video on, I love to see your faces and I really feel that energy. So if you can, please do, but if you don't want to equally, thank you. There's a few of your lovely faces coming up, but equally, <clears throat> if you don't want to, that's fine as well. Please, can you mute your microphone? Because sometimes like we just hear things. Um, so just make sure your microphone is muted until we have some interaction later. And maybe at the end we'll take a group photo, but I'll warn you before that's coming in case you don't want to be in the photo. I'm pretty sure that it's only speaker and slides that are actually on view for the recording. So you won't you won't be all over the internet, don't worry. Um, make use of the chat. I might not be able to see the chat too well as, as I'm talking, but I'll certainly see it at some point. And let's make it interactive so that it's not just me all the time. But um, first of all, let me introduce myself. So my name is Jo and I am an expert in transformation. I have been transforming for more than 30 years. So I've just aged myself. My career began in 1989. I have transformed myself, my life, where I live, hundreds of people, hundreds of animals, and I really, really enjoy it. I hold various qualifications in psychology and health and fitness. Um, but what I do, what I do most is I help people do exactly what they say they want to do. That's my job. I am living my purpose and my purpose is to create, to express, to expand. And along the way, I have a lot of adventure. I meet great people. I help animals and I play a lot. I have two companies. I live in um, Malaysia, in Borneo. I have two companies here, adventure companies. And I have one um, personal development wellness company called Hansa, which is based in the UK. And I'll give you my website later if you want to find out a bit more about me. Meanwhile, what are game changers? So game changers are simple. They're effective strategies and processes that um, will change your life. They'll give you a framework that will um, facilitate a change in perspective and I hope give you new insights. Whether you're objective is to age well, um, embark on a new health and fitness regime or goal, or to enhance what you're already doing. These are highly adaptable to all categories of your life and they are for everyone at any time. They will help you do what you say you wanna do. That's a big statement, right? <laughs> okay, part one is today. And then we've got part two next week. And then we've got a final. I actually did um, a transformation program in December, which was also recorded. It's on Lifebook. And I do touch on that as well. So um, it would be it would be great if you if you can also watch that another time. So part one today is we're going to talk about the power of mindset. Then we're going to identify dysfunctions that could be happening in your body that are causing inflammation because we simply cannot operate if we have um, chronic dysfunctions um, that we're not attending to. This is fundamental. So that's the physical side. We have to look at that. And then we're going to look at lifestyle um, needs that support our own body intelligence, our own unique genetic code that will heal us 
we have to have a lifestyle that supports that and allows that to do its job. <clears throat> okay, so for those of us that are life bookers, we have done the work. We have deep dived into our premise, our vision, our purpose, and our strategy. We have our life vision, we have our funnel of focus, we have our goals, we have our sacred choices, and we have our daily habits. Awesome. <clears throat> the daily habits is where the rubber hits the road. This is where the theory becomes the reality. And this is where people come to me because the wheels have fallen off. This is, this is, where, this is where the wheels fall off. And so this is where I come in and I help you put the wheels back on and get you back on your vehicle to go ahead and live your, your, um, your life vision. Now, what I'm gonna suggest in a moment is going to possibly disrupt your pattern of thinking. And I'm gonna propose something that is potentially a little bit um, provocative because I, I enjoy that kind of work. I'm going to say, what if everything you want to do, all of your goals, all of your vision, all of your daily habits, what if it was easy? Just, just, just let yourself say those words. What if it were easy? Then what would I do? How would I show up? what would my day look like? Now, <clears throat> I know that there's going to be pushback on that. We've got someone who's got some back. Okay, back noise. Um, right, I know I'm going to get some pushback on this. I usually do. I've probably set your chimp brain um, going haywire saying, well, it may be easy for you, but it hasn't been easy for me. Um, and I know that some people are going to want to onboard me with reasons why it's so hard. I'm not saying that there are no challenges. We have huge challenges. I'm not saying that there's no chaos in life, that life is fair. Life is not fair. I'm not saying that there's no discomfort. I'm not saying it's not painful. And I'm not saying that you will not have to do hard things. We have to do that all the time. And for me personally, in my life, when things have not been hard, I chase the hard, I chase the discomfort, I chase the challenge, because I know that's where I'm, I'm growing. What I am saying is we can do hard things. We can handle challenges we're designed for it. Our bodies are designed for it. What we have to do in order to make things easy is we have to get out of the way of ourselves. And I'll explain how I'm suggesting that we do that. What I'm suggesting is that you approach your life and you approach your vision, your foundational goals, your daily habits with this mindset. What if it were easy? I'm proposing that you bring this into every single day. Every morning I wake up and I say this, I, as part of my morning routine, I put my hands together, I close my eyes and I say, what if it was easy? I take a deep breath and I say, what if it was easy to provide my body with the nutrients it needs? What if it was easy to move my body in the way that it wants to move? What if it was easy to have um, love and intimacy in my life? What if it was easy to help the animals that I want to help? Every morning I say that about everything, every habit that I've set myself, because I know that that's going to make it easy. Now, <clears throat> transformation starts with the mind. So this is the mindset that I'm just suggesting that you bring in because... If you believe things are gonna be hard, it will be hard. If you believe you can't do something, you're probably right. I wanna share with you 
a story of one of my clients. And whenever I talk about clients, I never bring in personal identifiers because obviously it's confidential, but this is a true story. So she, the lady in her fifties, she went to the doctor. The doctor said, you're, you have, you're pre-diabetic. And unless you make some quite drastic changes to your lifestyle, you're going to be very sick. And so when she came to me, one of her big problems was she would wake up at 2 a.m. and um, she would eat a family sized bar of chocolate. And she knew she shouldn't do it. She knew she would feel crap after she's eaten it. But in her words, she was just possessed that she just woke up and mindlessly ate this chocolate. <clears throat> I started working with her. And we put together a treatment plan and I brought this in early and I said, resist me all you want. Uh, you're not going to onboard me with your reasons why. Please, please do it. Anyway, she did it and several, a little bit of time passed, a few weeks passed. And then she, she said one day in our session, something very strange, something has shifted. And she said, uh, someone's raised their hand. I'll have a look in a sec. Something shifted. Uh, is everything okay, everyone? Are we okay? Yeah, something had shifted for this lady. And one night she woke up and she only, she tasted the chocolate and it tasted different. And she thought, oh, is it off? But it tasted different. Um, she only ate half the bar of chocolate, put the rest back. A couple of nights later, she went to the fridge, she ate the chocolate. In her words, she said, it tasted toxic. The chocolate tasted toxic. I didn't want to eat it. I haven't eaten chocolate at 2 a.m. since. And it's easy for me not to eat the chocolate. And I just went, it works. I know it works. I know this works. I'm just inviting you to, to try it. Okay, why does it work? How does it work? I'm gonna back up what I've said. Let me just read something that's in the chat. Okay, no problem. Um, oh, oh, sorry. I'm back here. Um, okay, how does it work? Um, okay, in our we are gifted, our mind um, is the most complex, the most complex structure in the known universe. And what it does for us, it has what we call in psychology, a confirmation bias. Subconsciously, it looks for things to make us right. And we've all heard of confirmation bias, we know it exists. And the thing is, it wants to make us right because when we're right, we're on solid ground. There's, there's no ambiguity. We're just right and we feel safe. The mind also is listening all the time and it does what it thinks we want. It notices and it responds. So if you're saying, it's so hard. I just cannot be healthy. I cannot avoid crisps. My projects always fail. My diets always fail. I put on weight so easily. What do you think your brain is doing? What is your brain hearing? And what is your brain subconsciously looking for? It's going to look to make all of that, all of what you've said, Right. We're also hardwired for um, pleasure. And this hardwiring doesn't have foresight. So it doesn't know that the pleasure we get from eating chocolate or drinking wine is then going to have consequences. That's not part of it. Um, so what you have to do is you have to make what you know you should do pleasure. So you say, I love to run, 
I love to walk. I love to move my body. I love salad. I love vegetables. You associate what you know you should do with pleasure. And all of this you're saying out loud. You're not just saying it to yourself. Uh You're actually saying it. I'll give you an example. I used this recently. Um, I spent, we've got some, <laughs> a little bit of noise. Okay, hold on. Okay. Um, I used this recently when I was in the UK because, to be honest with you, don't listen, mind. I don't like the cold very much. I don't like it. That's why I live in the tropics. But I stayed until October in the UK and um, I knew I had to get used to heat. So I said, to my friends, to my family, I said out loud, sorry, I used to get get used to the cold. I said, I love the cold. My body loves to be cold. I just love that fresh air. I love that shiver. And my shoulders are always so relaxed when I'm in the cold. Guess what happened? I started feeling comfortable in the cold. It works. Now, just a note on this, there is no language point for your mind with the word don't. So if you say out loud, don't eat chocolate, what do you think is going to happen? Your brain only hears eat chocolate. Don't eat crisps. It only recognizes eat crisps. Don't binge watch Netflix. It only recognizes binge watch Netflix. So it only sees the positive. Don't doesn't exist. So you need to associate what you want to do with pleasure and ease and say it out loud. Okay. Uh, How much mortgage do you pay? Okay. Um, next. Again, why is this so powerful? Because belief forms the basis of our behavior. And the great thing is we can choose what we believe. Why? Because beliefs are not facts. Beliefs are something that we have investigated and that we have confidence in. Beliefs are something that cannot be proved or disproved. So you have the power to change what you believe. And that will dictate how you behave. This means that on a day-to-day basis, you get to choose who you be and how you will be. And that is that is really powerful. For this particular section, I'm gonna leave you with um, a Zen Cohen. So I, um, I'm a hypnotherapist, a clinical hypnotherapist. And in my, in my, uh, in my clinical practice, I use a lot of Zen koans during hypnotherapy because they're really beautiful short stories. So this one is called the rivers flow and a student overwhelmed by the complexities of life approached the Zen master seeking guidance. The master, sensing the student's struggle, took the student to the riverbank. Observe the river, said the master. It flows effortlessly, following its course without resistance. Imagine if the river pondered every obstacle as an insurmountable challenge. What if it questioned every twist and turn, fearing the rocks and currents? The student contemplated the tranquil flow of the river and replied, the river adapts and flows around obstacles, finding the path of least resistance. The master smiled. Likewise, approach life with the question, what if it were easy? Embrace challenges with a mindset that seeks the flow, the path of least resistance. And sometimes the most powerful transformations occur when we allow life to unfold with ease, like the river finding its way. 
And then this koan, the river symbolizes the ease and adaptability that can be embodied in our approach to life. And by adopting the mindset of what if it were easy, individuals can navigate challenges with a sense of flow, creativity, and a willingness to find solutions that align with the natural course of life. And what I love about what if it were easy is it sparks, it also sparks curiosity, which is another uh, powerful component of the mind if you can be curious because it's not an absolute. So that's why um, someone got the, can you make sure you're muted? Okay, mute. Okay. Um, so that's why it's paragraph like that. What if it were easy? You just, you just ask. Um, before we end this, do, do people, if you have your um, health and fitness habits, goals in front of you can you just take just take a few seconds to look at them and take it on board what if it were easy just allow your mind to just open up just open up to what if it were easy how how would you show up what would you do how different would your day be Okay, moving on. <clears throat> now this is, you may have seen this if you're familiar with um, Frank Lippmann and the functional medicine tree. So we're gonna look at dysfunctions and inflammation. And the reason why this is important and why it's a game changer is because physically, we are so absolutely integrated, emotional, physical. Um, your emotional and physical body is so powerfully integrated that if there is something going on within your body, if you have inflammation, it can be paralyzing uh, mentally and physically, psychologically and physically. So we need to look at this as a game changer because we need to rule out everything that we can rule out in terms of inflammation, what's causing the root causes of inflammation. Now this beautiful picture here, I can't take credit for. Anyone that knows uh, Ronan from um, Hollow Body, he drew this. And so um, with his blessing, I've taken it from him. Um, so this looks at the trunk of core dysfunctions and what causes inflammation. And it's the accumulation of inflammation that over time becomes dangerous and eventually breaks the weakest link. So what that means is, if you look at the top, you can see like we've got asthma, diabetes, dementia, cancer, heart disease, arthritis, autoimmune disease and ob obesity. People are shortening their healthy lifespan and their quality of life because of these chronic diseases. And when these show up, we go to specialists to help us. They give us drugs, they treat the disease and they might um, uh, lessen the effects for a period of time, but they pop up again. And then another one usually pops up too. And the reason that they keep showing up is because they're a combination of these core dysfunctions that are causing this inflammation. Now, inflammation is a sign of danger to the nervous system. It is a warning sign that our body intelligence needs to get its army um, and it needs to form an attack, which is fine and it's good. We need inflammation, we need the warning sign that we need to send in the military but not all day, every day, that will make us sick. And it makes us sick by um, weakening, um, by destroying um, the weakest link. It breaks the weakest link, which then forms these um, dementia, cancer, heart disease. So 
Now, the thing is with these core dysfunctions, they are they all have root causes. And these root causes are based on lifestyle. And lifestyle is based on the choices that we make every day. So what if we focused more on chronic health instead of chronic disease? What would that look like? What if we took advantage of our own genetic code that's already capable to treat any dysfunction in the body and repair it? How do we know that our genetic code can do that? Because it made us in the first place. Your DNA, my DNA, it has a genetic code. It created it created everything when we were in the womb. It created our hearts, our lungs, our muscles, our tendons, our joints. Everything was made by us, by our own body intelligence. So we know it can heal. We know it can create. <clears throat> we know it can repair. So, but we have to initiate that self-healing. We need to give our body what it needs and let nature do that let nature do the job so what does that look like the clue is in our human design what were we originally designed for and i'm talking about 200,000 years ago or 70,000 years ago um, before the agricultural revolution began we were made to move we were made to have good nutrients, we were made to sleep, we were made to live in community. So the root causes of this inflammation that causes the core dysfunctions that break the links that form the disease is in diet, nutrient, exercise, sleep, stress, relationship, spirituality, environment, toxins, infections, physical trauma, beliefs, attitudes, genetics, emotional trauma, and drugs. That's what we need to look at in order to activate our own inner doctor. Okay. Now, let's take a moment. Um, <clears throat> what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to do just a little exercise here. Take a couple of deep breaths and close your eyes and say to yourself, say out loud if you can, what does my body need? And just see if you can hear it. What are you picking up that your body needs? A need is different to desire. Desire is what catches us out. Need comes through knowing and intuition. Desire comes from cognitive thinking. What does your body need? Now, if something came up, can you write it down? Because we're going to revisit that. If nothing came up, don't worry because we can we can do this later okay i want to touch more on lifestyle so this is the third part of this um, workshop um, i want to share with you what are the seven lifestyle needs that support our inner power that allows our own body intelligence to work, that allows our own unique DNA to function um, and protects us from harm. First of all, nutrient richness. Now let's make it simple. Our body has to have all the nutrients that it needs to fuel our bodies. There is so much information out there on what we should or shouldn't eat. To be honest, I completely switch off from it. It's overwhelmed for me I, I because I want to do everything and I want to do everything really, really well. So I've chosen to pretty much ignore everything, listen to my body, 
and eat whole foods. I just don't eat processed foods. If it comes in a small packet, I don't eat it. If it's if it's got if I can't read the ingredients, I don't eat it because it means that there's too many and there's too much. So whole foods, lots of legumes, lots of vegetables, lots of fruit, um, whole whole meal products, um, no processed food. Simple. Frequent movement. Now, this is why I really wanted to have this challenge. I think maybe uh, you all know about the challenge that we've got going on for health and fitness this month. Um, my intention was to uh, motivate people to move their bodies frequently. I call them micro workouts. So our body was developed to move all the time. Our genetic code realized tens and tens of thousands of years ago that movement happened during the day and no movement happened during the night when we were sleeping. So it made synergies between, between movement and internal functions. It's kind of like coming back to that river. So it's like a flowing river. Let's say, for example, you put a turbine on it and the turbine only works when the river's flowing and the turbine, turbine produces uh, electricity energy if that water stops flowing if our bodies stop moving uh, if the lifestyle is changing if that water flowing down the river starts to just sit in front of a computer all day what do you think is going to happen to the turbine it's going to stop moving and it's going to stop producing the energy it's not going to work anymore and that's what happens to our bodies when we stop moving our genetic code um, during the day is expecting muscle contractions. It's expecting mobility and it runs processes that need that kind of movement. So what I do, and it's been a game changer for me, is every 60, 90 minutes I get up just for five or 10 minutes and I move, I stretch because I have a sitting down job a lot of the time. So I move, I stretch, I shake. I um, uh, punch myself, uh, pat myself, um, I, um, I stretch, right? And I walk, I walk in the morning, I walk at lunchtime, I walk in the evening, just a little amount of work. What, what um, the data is showing us now is even if you do 60 minutes of an intense workout, but the rest of the time you're seated down, seated, it's um, not optimal for our bodies. So frequent movement, sound sleep. Uh, we need nighttime to process, repair and recover. This is where the mind does all of its filing and tidying up. So we need sound sleep. Inner stillness. Uh, now this is our resistance to stress. Um, <clears throat> game changer. When we can realize that the content of our experience, that's what we see, what we hear, what we touch, what we feel, what we think, is not essential to our, our true being. That's when we find peace, love, and happiness. Because you are the peace, the love and the happiness that you're seeking. It's already there, you already have it. We all do, all 8 billion of us on the planet already have it, but it's veiled by the content of our experience. It's veiled by the noise. So that inner stillness, it brings us back to that place of contentment. And when we can operate from that, and when we learn how to return to that, whenever we choose, that's where we build the resilience. Because actually we start to realize none of it actually matters, right? Um, so again, slightly provocative, I know, but um, I do a lot of work in that area and it's really incredibly powerful. Deep connection. So um, 
Our physical body is very weak and fragile in isolation. We need human connection. We're social animals and we come from tribes. You know, we were super vulnerable in days gone by if we were alone and we weren't within our tribe. And that's still with us. So our friends and our family, um, people, um, very important. We need to make time for that. Sync with nature. So we need sunlight. We need gravity. Just look at what happens when people go to the moon. The atrophy is just insane, right? They the, the way that they lose their, their muscles. Um, so we need this. Um, we are nature. And so when we're connected with it, we're energized. So it's important to get out and spend time in nature every day. And then a sense of purpose. Now, a sense of purpose, we don't all have it. Um, and it changes. We don't need the same kind of purpose um, from, you know, when we realize it to the day we die, it can change and it can look like whatever you want it to look like. So purpose is just, what is that thing that really lights you up? That if you think about it first thing in the morning, you think, I can't wait to start my day. And people who have a sense of purpose, they take care of themselves more. Now, these seven uh, lifestyle um, um, habits or lifestyle essentials, uh, this is not just me that's saying this. This You can find this information. We have data now from the CDC and from the Na National Institute of Aging. In fact, the National Institute of Aging conducted an experiment over quite a long period of time, and they asked within the questions were these lifestyle um, habits. And they came up with a statistic that if you do this, your chances of living a healthy lifestyle into your 90s without chronic disease increases by 80%. That's massive, right? I'll take that. I mean, if I can live into, into my 90s without healthily, I'll take that um <clears throat> it's worth the effort okay so what we're seeing is time and time again when we get out of our way and let nature do the work we thrive um okay i want to do a summary first and then we'll get on to some q a and some interaction so the summary was um what if it were easy? Even if you don't want to go there, just go there for a while. It's important to identify your dysfunction because we all have stuff going on. And it's important that we realize what's going on and we look at ways that our own body intelligence can help us heal. Look at inflammation. What is causing inflammation in our body? Bring attention to the seven lifestyle needs because that's going to support your body intelligence and allow it to do its job. If you want more information on body intelligence and how to communicate with your body intelligence, watch the first event that I had about transforming your health and fitness for, for lasting health and fitness. It's posted in the event show notes because we talked about body intelligence there. And what I want to leave you with today is when you did the exercise just now about what does your body need, um, look at your answer and just ask yourself, like, where does that fall into these lifestyle needs? Does it fall into one of them? And um, what we're going to do next week, next Saturday, is we're gonna look at how we can transform those seven lifestyle needs, um, which play a major role in our lives into our daily habits. And I'll just give you some game-changing information on zero resistance habits. How again, how, how again we can make this easier so that we can flourish and nourish our health. Okay, final thing is, um, if you want to get in contact with me, I actually have specific um, holistic health programs that this has just touched on what I do. There's so much more. Um, 
you can check out my website and you can look at the programs. And if you want to um, talk with me further, you can book a discovery call, which is free. It's 20 minutes and we can have a chat and I can see um, how, how I might be of more help. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now and I'm gonna look at your beautiful faces and I'm just gonna have a look at the chat. We had a couple of things that in the chat. Chat, what if we the person? Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. Um, discomfort, right? Discomfort. Somebody's asked here, what if the positive phrases and affirmations, physically you feel them? So I tell myself, I'm a meditator. After a good 20 minutes, the body feels very uncomfortable. I mean, discomfort is a couple of things. Like we, uh, Discomfort can be um, a path to growth very much so and you know I personally do look for the discomfort I go with that our monkey brain will always try and keep us safe and it doesn't have foresight so it will set alarms going off all the time it really would just want to keep you in your comfort zone it doesn't want you to get out of that but when we go out of our um, comfort zone that's when we learn that's when we adapt you know, I, I did a, an interesting thing. Actually, you know what? I really want to stop talking because I could talk forever. Um, why don't we have, should we have a little bit of interaction first? Has anyone got any um, delicious water? Yeah, that's it. You've got it. I love water. I love drinking water. I love my lemon water first thing in the morning. I love my black coffee instead of my milky coffee. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking. Does anyone want to, um, can anyone say, I feel really alone here because I've just been talking for 45 minutes. I'd like to say something. Thank you, Melody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to say a huge thank you, Joe, um, and just explain to people why, <laughs> not just for today, but I first met Joe in December um, I'm a therapist of 30 years and I work with the physical body, fascia, mus muscular issues, um, emotional issues with NLP, dietary issues with muscle testing and radionics and um, energies as well. And I was stuck um, because of the situation that I was in. Um, I've always been fit and I live in a very public place. I'm in a motorhome and there were issues that were preventing me from being able to train here. And Jo, bless her, gave me some of her time. You know, I, ordinarily I take care of everything that's going wrong with me and I was completely blocked with this and couldn't get past it. And Jo gave me a little bit of her time gave me some suggestions, did a little woo-woo maybe with me and it, it, I'm fine, you know, I'm, I've got another class with Danny in a couple of hours, which is while training, I'll probably be leaping around in front of everybody like a gorilla. I've got no idea what I've got to come, but that I probably wouldn't even be doing the health and fitness months um, or I wouldn't be able to do it to my maximum potential without having met joe so listen to her programs <laughs> follow them all and take it in because i've worked you know it's it's been my my work for the last 30 years i study and um she's been able to very quickly overcome a block that i had that i couldn't cope with myself so huge thank you joe and Thank I'm not plant. I'm not a plant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here under my own volition. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's powerful things out there for us to discover. And uh, sometimes it's simple. And, you know, I, we talked about it. It's like we can't do things for ourselves, mm. right? It's I can't remember who said it. It's like there are three great mysteries of life, like birds, to the sky fish to the ocean and humans to themselves we can't we can't do things for ourselves we we need others you know 
therapists need therapy coaches need coaches um and sometimes it's there's it's just something and that's what I love it's something that's said or done it's an insight it's a a reframe it can be s- simple I like to keep things simple but then you think huh I, I could choose that I can do that you know I've got that kind of power and it's yeah it's um yeah it's life-changing thank you you're welcome okay. thank you Anyone else want to share? Anyone have a challenge?